to Cross Hatch Creations. Uh, my name is Sarah and uh, we're gonna make a Yoda today. I'm pretty stoked. Um, I love Star Wars so this will be good. We'll start off with another word of the day. This is a surprise stream and uh, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so the word of the day is Chiliad, um, which means, I'm pretty sure I'm saying it right. Uh, if not, correct me. Um, which means a thousand things or years. So um, my currency, they're called globs. So if you jump into the chat um, or shoot me a message and use the word Chiliad, I'll, uh, I'll give you some points. So that is awesome. I thought Chiliad was a fitting um, word of the day. See me as we're doing Star Wars, which is a, a long, long time ago, a long way in the future or whatever. Um, <laughs> so that is awesome. I'll just make sure my mic is on here and then we'll get started. It looks like we're going through. Um, I'm sure we have sound. If not, you can see what I'm doing anyway. So hopefully that'll be enough. Um, so we got some Star Wars music going on in the background, which is always awesome. I find sci-fi movies have like the best um, soundtracks. I don't know if I've yet to come across a sci-fi movie that I haven't loved the soundtrack for. So we're just going to rock out to that. It's kind of calming too, you know, kind of the spacey um, sound to it. I'm using a marble cutting board for my surface here. Um, clay being clay, the sculpty clay that I'm using, um, it's kind of like plasticine, but not. You can bake it um, to harden it. We did some Pokemon the other night, which was fun. Um, you just gotta warm it up to make it moldable, but sometimes if it gets so warm, it'll actually melt a little bit. It'll get a little um, too soft and kind of mushy. So I don't want it mushy just because it's hard to work with and it won't cooperate very well. Um, and when you roll it out, actually, uh, it like sticks to your cutting board and then you've made this beautiful shape uh, but you can't get it off the cutting board and then you wreck it when you get it off the cutting board which is really sad because it's like I just worked for that and now it's you know smushed so I've got my green here he's a little more subdued as we can see Yoda in the corner there <laughs> it's always weird working in a mirror hey I find it impressive when people can like paint in a mirror it's pretty intense um, but we're gonna go for a, a brighter green because he's a, we're making a cute cartoony kind of Yoda um, Yoda's always been one of my favorites because can you not love Yoda I think my favorite Star Wars movie is probably Return of the Jedi um, I spent a lot of time watching Star Wars over and over and over again. It was a, a family favorite, well, for my, my dad. So um, I've spent a lot of time just like sitting watching Star Wars, um, growing up to it. So that in Star Trek, <laughs> walking into the room and being like, what is going on? Good, it's a childhood right there is uh, Star Wars and Star Trek, right? Awesome, so I'm just making him a cute little round head. Um, I'm gonna use some tools tonight. I'm just using, uh, these are also just like sculpty, sculpting tools. I've got, I've got some leftover gold clay on this guy. Um, this is just a flat headed tool, some rounded balls. These are great for flower petals, eye sockets, which we'll probably play with a bit later. Um, so you got some rounded ends here too. That kind of looks like a pencil and for just your different shapes and textures. So what I want to do is give uh, a bit of that nose shape, kind of the, the coming out of the face. So I'm going to squish his head this way a bit. And I'm going to give him a bit of a nose. So I'm actually just going to use the, the medium shape <laughs> of the ball uh, and just kind of flatten it. Uh, just to give it that pronounced snout-like appearance. Um, the nice thing about clay is it's super forgiving. Um, and you can always smooth it out, which is great. Uh, the clay I'm using anyway is quite forgiving. I'm sure there's some out there that might not be as forgiving. But that's okay. 
um, different skills for different things. My favorite Star Wars, I think maybe because it was always like Return of the Jedi was always playing and my dad would like watch it. So I always came in near the end. I don't know why I always ended up coming in near the end. Um, hmm. And then I'm going to bring that down a bit, actually. I want him to have a cute little round mouth. And it always had to see me at the end. I like, I love the planet Endor. Um, I love Ewoks. I love, I have a clay Ewok. Maybe we'll have to make one as well. Um, I'm also just kind of smoothing up my fingerprints as well. Kind of as like a finishing touch. Because I don't want my fingerprints in it. <laughs> I want it to be nice and smooth. Um, okay, and let's do a little lower. Because he's adorable and he's got a little mouth. Okay, and then we're going to build him some eyes. So what I'm going to actually use for this one is the flat end. And I'm going to lift him an eyelid. Woohoo. <laughs> uh, kind of far apart because he's adorable. I find the cutest things always have like... Um, really close to the other eyes or kind of far apart eyes, but like right in the middle eyes. Um, maybe there's something cuter there. I'll, I'll, I'll have to see if I can find it. <laughs> I saw this wonderful illustration today and it was like dog personalities, honestly, um, described. And one of them that I thought was hilarious, I could remember, maybe because I'm house sitting for someone with a, an English bulldog right now, but it was like secrets many secrets found in their wrinkles or something <laughs> or there's lots of stuff that's like um slobbered out all their brains for friendliness or something like that i think that was a retriever not. okay so we have his eyelids kind of out there um and then we're gonna stick his eyeballs underneath so i'm gonna grab some white i actually had a moment earlier where i was looking around for my white clay and i was like I don't know if I have any, um, which is unfortunate because white is like the only color that I can't make. <laughs> so what do you do when you don't have any white? You go buy more because <laughs> you can always like, I mean, I guess your primary colors too. You can't make those either. You also got to watch your fingers when you're working with white because it'll pick up whatever color you've got going on as well. So you could turn it gray, which would be okay in this because uh, Yoda's a little earth tone. What I do for eyes, um, I like to, some people roll them out. I actually have like a stencil for circles, but um, I just find what's worked best with little stuff like this is rolling them out. These actually might be too big um, and then squishing them. Um, I think that might be a little on the big side, but let's, let's see. It's lots of... Uh, trial and error right um because and then i'm using the flat end again to, again to apply yeah those seem a little big for cute yoda so i think i'm going to go half that size actually and uh we'll see where that takes us and then lifting it and placing it um i don't know if i mentioned it earlier but i chose the marble cutting board because it keeps it cool uh and it, it doesn't actually stick as much as others i've used plastic as well a cut plastic cutting board but as you use it that looks a little cuter and he's kind of droopy yoda's an old guy i'm gonna give it more of an oval shape i think here and smooth out my fingerprints <laughs> um but the as you cut um plastic kind of starts to wear away after uh numerous uses a, a thousand things. Oh, darn. I over-exaggerated chili out of times. <laughs> I'm trying to use the word. Um, it picks up the plastic with your knife as you use it. So then eventually, when it's old enough, you end up rolling into it. Let's see if I have a cutting board here. I can show you. And then the clay actually sticks into the cutting board. And then that is not useful at all. That's better. And we're gonna shove it under his eyelid there. Usually eyelids go over top, but 
We're gonna go the other way around and flatten it out here. It looks a little too oval, so I'm just gonna push it on, make it the shape that I want it on his face. <laughs> he looks a little sad. Maybe he's a little tired. He's been training with Luke and it hasn't been going very well. <laughs> he's being too stubborn. But uh, Star Wars is awesome. I actually had an opportunity, and which I took, um, I met Carrie Fisher before she passed away, which was amazing. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, I met her at the Calgary Expo. You look so sad and droopy. Um, I met her, yeah, I met her at the Calgary Expo. What year was that? 2000 and something. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're in the 2000s. <laughs> Obviously, Sarah. 2000 something. He's starting to look a little alienish. I also love the Martian Manhunter, so maybe my subconscious is like, Yoda? No. Martian Manhunter. <laughs> no, subconscious, we're making Yoda. Um, yeah, so she, she came to that Calgary Expo and uh, hung out with us. I saw her, they did an interview of her, and she's such an awesome lady, uh, just talking about her experience with bipolar, and, and her book is amazing as well. I've heard. Not just because it's an audiobook copy that I have. Because <laughs> I've heard. Uh, no, um, I've heard great things about her book as well. It was really sad watching the new Star Wars movie, especially at the beginning there. This is a spoiler alert. Um, if you haven't seen the beginning of the movie, <laughs> plug your ears. Um, I'll give you the signal, which will be this one. Um, when to unplug your ears. So when she like goes and gets shot out of the window, Princess Leia is who I'm talking about. Um, Carrie Fisher. <laughs> when she gets shot out of the window and it's like she's floating in space. I just had this moment of, this is when she dies. They started filming, and then she died mid-film, and, and now they're just going to kill her off like this, and it makes me really sad. Like, every time something happened in the film, I was like, oh, here, sorry. You can talk again. <laughs> every, or listen, uh, every time something happened in the film, I was like, oh my gosh, this is when they're going to kill her off or something. I was so scared that they were going to just, like, make her go away because she died. But I guess they finished all the filming before she passed away. But uh, it's too bad. I'm, I'm sure that they would have loved to do more. Um, anyway, so I met her. I asked her if she preferred DC or Marvel. Um, I, she, I think she asked me what they were. I don't know if she knew at the time. Um, at the time, I was also dressed up. I feel like um, the Star Trek guy, my headset is Bluetooth, but I did not charge it. So I have a cord coming out like the back of my neck. I'm secretly uh, AI, guys. <laughs> Just kidding. As far as you know. I mean, hey, they're coming out with like AI for... Uh, cooks so why not artists who knows um it was pretty cool though I uh it was great to see her oh yeah that was the year I I cosplayed as Miss Martian um <laughs> and I was like in green latex I learned if you want to do a cosplay and do your whole whole body covered um don't do liquid latex because you will stick to yourself so you can't sit you can't bend you can't scratch your ear or else your skin will stick to yourself and you peel and then you bubble and you look like you got blisters and pulls apart or unless you put powder onto it to make it less sticky um which also doesn't work too great. Um, I'm just giving him a little more definition. 
This eyelid worked beautifully and got nice and fat over top. This one did not, so we're gonna push on it and uh, give it a little more shape for the eye socket. So again, I'm just using the tiny ball on this guy and throw a little bit on there, round it out, give it a little bit of definition and even pushing together to the eyelid. Um, it got a little piecey. Nobody likes their eyelids in pieces. Um, and just covering over top. So yeah, I ended up like, my I mermaided. I was <laughs> getting, is that a word? <laughs> I was getting ready in the bathroom, painting myself green. Always a fun time. And I tripped. And my legs <laughs> together. And I fell into the bathtub which I think is suiting, uh, f fitting if I say I'm mermaided. <laughs> oh, and I was stuck in the bathroom and my friend that was with me was like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm stuck. And she had to like help me peel my limbs apart. It was just like a party. Oh, he looks a little sad. We're going to push his eyelid up a bit so it looks a little less sad. That is the one thing about clay, though. Once you stick stuff together, it kind of wants to stay stuck together. <laughs> so you gotta know. Am I wanting to do this? Yes. Comic Con's a good time, though. It's like the one place where you like meet strangers solely on the fact that you love the same characters. Like I was Miss Martian. Um, my friend went as Raven, or Teen Titans, and we found a Beast Boy, and we were all like. Ah, so we ran and you're like getting pictures with strangers and it's the one time like strangers come up to you and they're like can we take your picture and you're like yeah you can take my picture when else would you ever go up on the street to someone and be like hey I'm gonna take your picture can I take your picture and they're like okay you know it's not really a thing you do but at comic-con it's a very common occurrence a common con occurrence <laughs> Well, this is Calgary Expo. I'm, I'm not sure if it matters. I called it Comic-Con. It's like our Canada Comic-Con. I think Calgary might be the bigger, biggest one in Canada. It might be. It's on the Stampede's grounds. It's pretty, it's, it's fun. Um, and the Artist Alley is amazing. I could just walk up and down there all day. It's just like geek art everywhere magical. I'm just smoothing out his eyes. He's got some bags. We're giving him a bit of a facelift. So we got his, his the whites of his eyes going on here. Um, and we're going to give him a little nose. Who knows? <laughs> Doing the same thing. I'm just going to roll it out on the marble. Give it a little squish. But yeah, we got to listen to her um, Carrie Fisher's chat. It was super awesome. Also, um, Stan Lee, he goes to the Calgary Expo like every single year. Um, I don't know why I didn't get his signature. I got Carrie Fisher's signature. My mom had these old, because my mom, my, my parents both actually were a bit st uh, Star Wars nuts. Um, ooh, sorry, sometimes the sound of X-Acto when I blade on Marvel was just like, it felt like nails on a chalkboard. That was not a pleasant noise. I don't know if I like this size of nose, but we can always take it off if we don't like it. Let's look. What is his? It's little and round. I think I want to make it a little smaller. Just so he's got more of the cute factor. How small is too small? But she had these old trading cards, Star Wars trading cards that she had um, that she got me to get signed for her so I guess that was kind of special but it's pretty crazy what Disney's doing when I was there last year does that look adorable maybe let's make it a little higher maybe his eyes are too close together so he's not adorable nah he's not done yet I think that's a good spot we'll squish it right there squish 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 okay let's give him some eyeballs <laughs> he has eyeballs. Pupils are important. So let's grab some black. 
Yeah, because his eyes are pretty dark there. I uh, have an open black. Yes. Um, and give him some pupils. Pupils are always the scary part. Um, I think they should be decently sized because whenever you see something get cute in animation, the pupils get huge. So we'll do them a bit bigger. But we'll see how big is too big. Awesome. All right. Beautiful. Okay, how big are you? Bloop. And do we want to make them round? I think I do want to make it round. So, let's see what that looks like. I think that's a little too big. It's a little too fat, too. So we'll take a little bit more off of that. Next time, though, I've really recently gotten into uh, Carcassonne. It's a board game. It's like puzzles, but uh, kind of like Settlers of Catan, but like puzzle pieces and much faster and a little less complicated. Um, and I really enjoy it. It is quite the good time. Your board game is like your board is always changing and um, it's never two, two ways. Although I find it's more fun and you never get two that are the same is what I'm trying to say. It's really fun to do like a speed carcass on because I found like I'd get too competitive and then it, would, it would, wouldn't be as fun. Um, yeah, we'll stick that eyeball right there. So... <laughs> there we go so uh, when you speed it up you can't really spend as much time getting like competitive because uh, you're just trying to get through it as fast as possible and it makes it a little more fun but I thought it'd be fun to go uh, with a gaming pass and like just do like a Carcassonne tournament I mean, who knows? It's always one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, I'm pretty decent at this. And then you go and you get those crazy awesome people who are super strategic and like really good at what they do. Um, and then you're like, oh, okay, never mind. But I mean, you never know until you try because maybe you are one of those crazy awesome strategic smart people or just good at the game. Uh and you could go and win something or, you know, just enjoy like playing the game with other people who also love the game. There's always something like special about finding people that love the same games. Uh, I recently got Pandemic, which is good. Cooperative games are a lot of fun. Um, I'm just going to give them little eye sparkles because I think eye sparkles are adorable. So he's going to have a little tiny eye sparkle there. So you can see he's got a little, oh, <laughs> a little eye sparkle. Um, plus it's, but it's kind of like interesting. We've, we also got one that's called the Forbidden Desert. So basically you're in this desert and you're trying to escape it. And, uh, oh, it's sticking to my finger. There we go. And we've been playing it when we, like, have friends over that maybe don't play board games and we really want to show them a game. And, like, this is good because we're not competing. Uh, we're hanging out. And we're, we're all trying to escape the desert. But then, I'm not right-handed. <laughs> but then there's that moment where it's like, oh, dear. I don't think we're actually going to, like, get out of this alive. And then you all die together in the desert and it's like I'm just moving it over the little white dot because the one side looked really nice and the other side looked like it kind of like was blending in so now we've got some better eye sparkles going on here because he's happy uh, we're gonna give him a little mouth too and then we'll uh, maybe throw in a couple wrinkles so make a tiny little thin mouth I kind of want to even know your worms. Lots of little stuff. 
we'll do some bigger stuff that might be a little easier to see as well a bit here then you all die together and it's like, oh, they're never going to want to play games again. Got to be careful, hey. You kind of got to ease people in with the, with the fun ones. Yeah, there's a cute little one. I find when you roll clay, um, dough anything um, sculpt-ish, <laughs> that the ends are always thinner than the middle. Even when you roll it evenly. I'm going to give him a really cute little smile. Um, and I'm also going to use... Place it with this one and just like... Uh, maybe a little closer up. And then I'm going to push it down with the other one here. I'm kind of ambidextrous, not really. But if you're not, feel free to just put the knife down. <laughs> um, I was afraid I would lose my place if I didn't. I'm just going to give it the little curves. I really like this flat end. It's it's the one that I use the most. It's like my fingers, but there's no heat on it. So things don't want to stick to it because it's not warm. Um, but yeah, anything sculptable seems to have. There's our little happy green Yoda. Uh, gets thinner near the ends. So uh, what am I going to do? I guess I should give him some ears. No, let's give him some wrinkles first. So I, I like to actually chop the ends off just so it looks like it's an even thickness all the way through. So Yoda's got a lot of wrinkles around his mouth. Um, so I'm just going to give him a couple little lines here in the clay. Some indentations, not fingerprints. <laughs> um around his mouth because he's a cute Yoda and he's smiling. It's kind of interesting how like prolific some sci-fi movies, even people who aren't into sci-fi just know like his saying do or do not there is no try. I see that everywhere. Um, and his eyelids I really want them to go over top of his eyes. Um, we kind of got a bit of that look, but we're going to play a little bit. I also have this roller. It's clear plastic. I rolled that too thin. <laughs> you could use wood. Um, I think it would probably stick, but there's lots of plastic rolling pins out there as well. I like this one because it's a good size for the type of sculpting I do. I do quite, I like doing small things, so um, something larger would be a little too clunky and, and a little difficult. So, and that one's also, it's just the type of plastic. It's nice. It doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to pick it up. There we go. I got a little too violent. I've been making lots of cinnamon buns recently, so maybe my arms are just, like, in the rolling. Actually, I took a fondant making course once. Um, if you don't know what fondant is, it is that sheet icing look type thing. That, um, okay, eyelids. So I want them to go over his eye, almost rounded, so I'm just going to chop that out with the X-Acto. I'm going to cut it round on the one side. And I think I'm going to leave the other side pretty big. Uh, just because I want to be able to pull the clay into his head so it looks like it's attached. <laughs> um, right, so if you don't know what fondant is, it's that sheet icing, um, really smooth look. Some people can do some awesome stuff with buttercream. And which makes it, oh, that just got really epic. Oh, this is like all of the moments are happening right now. There we go. That looks better with his eye. Okay, now we're going to attach it. So I'm just going to push on it, push it, push it, and pull. So just little tiny pulling dabby motions. 
blending it into his forehead. This is actually a lot of clay, um, and I don't want it to get too thick. So I'm going to slice some of it off. Yoda's getting an eye lift. There we go. And smooth the rest of it in there. So then it's like his eyelid is thicker and out, um, but his head is still looking shape lift. Shape ished and not super thick in the one spot. And I want to keep that side down. Um, another way, we're going to use this tool, I think. Um, that's a little noisy. So I'm doing this fondant making course. And part of making fondant, you like make this liquid mixture with like glycerin and stuff. It's like all sugar. And you put your flavoring in, whether you want it to be like, if you do like almond, it turns it into marzipan, which is basically like this is what it feels like and looks like. So it's like clay, but then you can eat it. So people like sculpt with marzipan and stuff. Um, and or if you do vanilla or whatever flavor you want to do. Doesn't really matter, depending on your cake, blah, 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 blah. So you make that together, and then you have a massive amount of icing sugar. That's another reason I like using the flat tip uh, for blending clay together in places that my fingers are a little too big for. And I'm also going to use it to flatten down his eyelid as well. So it doesn't look like it's so chopped. That looks better. So first eyelid compared to the other. Starting to look a little better. It's a little chunky on this side, I think. Cool. Okay. Uh, and then we'll just do the same thing for the other eyeball. That's always the one thing in art, hey, when you draw one side of the face. I'm going to move that black before I accidentally roll it into a color and then it's ruined forever. Uh, you draw one eye and you're like, that's beautiful. That's a perfect eye. And then uh, you go to draw the other one and you can't get it to match. If you draw, you may know what I'm talking about. It's always quite sad. Okay. Rolling this out. I'm gonna do a little thin, making sure I can still get it off of my marble. Sometimes my clay still sticks. Um, you also gotta like clean them, believe it or not. <sighs> what a shame. Uh, Cause old clay, if it's on there, they kind of like to stick to each other. You can kind of, I got some green on there. Okay, so now that that one side, I was just tapping on the one side just so it was nice and flat um, and smooth. I love it. I love the smooth. Okay, so again, we're going to go, this is too big. So I'm going to chop it to the size I want it to be. Do a round, rounded, uh, curving up like it was going around the eye. Uh, and then we'll just chop off this top part too, because I didn't actually end up needing as much as I thought, but better too much than too little, because then we don't have to start over. We can just cut it off. So I'm going to size that up. Doesn't quite fit. This side's a bit too long. So I'm just going to cut that end off on this side again. At this point, even if it's a little on the thick side, my concern mostly is that it matches. Because it, even if it looks funny, as long as they both look funny together, I can say, oh, I did it on purpose. Actually, no. I just like it matching. Whatever your reasons may be. Okay, that looks good. So we have sized up his eye. He's got that going on. Um, I'm just going to set it in place just with a little bit of pressure. And give him another little like eye lift here. We'll uh, chop off some unneeded pieces. 
And again to just patting it, pressing it in, and pulling. This little tiny pulling, pushing movements. Um, so I'm taking this fondant class. And I'm used to making bread and like buns and stuff. Is what I'm, I usually make a lot of. And so you pour this mixture into this b giant bowl of like icing sugar, like eight cups, like a massive amount of icing sugar. And you have to knead it in like really slowly. Like it takes like an hour for not even a whole lot of fondant. Like it's quite time consuming. After doing it, I'm like anyone who makes homemade fondant for cakes, good on you. You have a lot of patience. <laughs> um, patting down the eye as well. I guess this takes patience. So if you love it, I guess that's all that matters. Because if you love it, then it's not like it's work. Okay, so this one actually blended in really nice and smooth. So I'm going to try and get this other side to blend in the same way. It looks a little choppy. Uh, I might have actually... Now he looks sad. <gasps> we'll just push it back up. It's all good. Oh, Yoda's starting to get cute. He kind of looks like a little pea. Okay, I'm just going to smooth in this right in here. There we go. Perfect. And then his one eyelid there is looking a little chunky as well. So we're going to use this corner. This uh, fat brush. So we're making fondant and I start kneading it. And you know, bread, you knead. You like put your whole body into that. But you're supposed to like gently add the flour to the middle because the liquids. So you have uh, icing sugar, your liquid, and you like fold the powder into the liquid and I'm going for it and she's like you have a lot of anger you should do yoga before you make fondant and I was like but no I just no <laughs> maybe I was in denial maybe I was angry okay so now I've got his eyes and his head um I'm going to He's got some wrinkles. Uh, we've got some wrinkles on his head um, as well. So I'm just gonna draw those in. We've got some, just a light hold on the knife. Just some above his eye. Sometimes the clay likes to flake out as well when you uh, are slicing. So I like to pat it down. And we'll do another one just for good measure. Um, not needing to do, this is kind of a detail that you could leave till the end, which might be um, a smart idea. I might end up having to touch these up, most probably, because we haven't added the ears yet. And once you add the ears, head wrinkles, I'm probably gonna end up smoothing all those out just to get the ears attached. So, Yoda's ears. I'm going to squish, I'm going to pinch his head a little bit here. I am going to make the ears and attach it, but I'm just making almost something um, I can attach the ears to. Like a tadpole, we're making little legs. <laughs> the, the tail that'll turn into legs. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, his ears. He's got big old pointy ears. How do we want to do this? And they're big and flat. I think I'm going to roll out my clay. This is what we're going to do. Roll out the clay. I'm going to leave it a good thickness. I don't want it to be too thin. Um, when it bakes, if it's too thin compared to the rest of it, it, uh, it gets quite frail. That's a nice thickness. Okay. We're going to give him... He's got... It's like a big round outside ear and then the flat on the inside. So I'm going to make the flat inside part of the ear. 
to let's make it just a nice oh this is really thick actually I don't even know what species Yoda is uh, he's awesome I know that yeah that looks good we'll do that we'll see if we're happy with this and then actually what you can do so you can match them uh, since I'm cutting it out once I get this to a shape that I like that looks Yoda-y um, I'll just use it as a template I'm not gonna squish that together because I want this to be the same size so I'm just gonna smooth it out that side was a little fatter than the other and stick it on top and then you don't have to sit and shape forever and ever and ever and try and get them to be the same there we go all right kind of leaf shaped almost little leafy so I'm actually gonna add the other part of the ear to this um, like the rounder fatter outer side and probably won't use the the tip up the pointed side of the ear as much it's mostly gonna be my attachment and then on the back here and then I'm gonna smooth it out just like I did the eyelid yeah we'll do that we'll squish it on so why not let's just do that um, now I've changed my mind no it's too late now we're just gonna roll with it <laughs> awesome okay so rubbing it into the back here and then I'm gonna curve it because I want it to have shape so this is where these guys come in awesome uh, just giving it some roundness because we're you know things aren't flat very often unless you're made of paper I guess Aw, he's starting to get cute. I love it. Okay, flipping this over to the other side. Do, 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 do. This is like the prettiest version of like the Star Wars theme I've ever heard. It's just so like penny whistle. I met a guy who can play a penny whistle. If you haven't seen one, they're like the little like copper whistle thing. It was wonderful. All right, perfect. Here we go. So now it's kind of rounded. Uh, we're going to add this right onto the side, just like the other one. Oh, now he's starting to look like Yoda and less like the Martian Manhunter. Cute. I love it. You know, things are cute when you just go, ah, when you make it. I wonder if that's how people feel about their children. Oh. I made that. Okay, now we're going to add that texture. Um, and I just want like a super, the top, we're going to make a little fatter and thinner on the bottom half there. So, here we go. Here we are. Rolling this out. Uh, right about... <laughs> lots of tiny stuff shake the camera like we're having a party <laughs> I also like to um, something I've done on other streams a lot is ask some weird questions uh, and answer them I mean I just like talking about Star Wars but we could do that as well so let's pull up a question um List five things you want to see before you die. Oh, kind of like a bucket list. Uh, what's on my bucket list? I personally really would love to ride in a hot air balloon. I don't know why. Part of me thinks that I would be terrified the whole time. This got a little thin, so I'm just going to keep thinning it out and turn it into my bottom layer. So then uh, I'm saving a step. I feel like I'll be terrified 
the whole time because you're in a basket flying over the air. Is that not super scary or what? I think that would be a little scary, but it also sounds amazing because you're flying in a basket over the air. So it's like almost like flying. But it's like, what if it pops? Okay, so instead of trying to cut the right size, I just made a nice long thin piece. I'm going to stick her on there. And uh, cut it when it's where I want it to be. So that's just going to save some work, save you some frustration. Now that that's on there, we can just use one of our tools. It doesn't really matter too much, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, to just squish it on there. Being careful not to press so hard that you push the ear off. Because uh, we don't want that. This one's nice. It's a little bit uh, pointed. So I'm actually flattening and rounding it as I go. So it stays nice and smooth and not isn't uh, so spotty. And just following the, the curve of the ear as well. And uh, I guess you could just leave the ear, um, but I find that just adds a nice little touch of definition. If you wanna make it extra cute. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. Rolling it out again. And maybe, who knows, if I get a nice long fat worm. <laughs> We'll uh, keep it on top. I love worms. I think worms are super cool. I was hanging out with someone and they were digging potatoes out of their garden. And there was this little tiny worm. And he was like this big. And he was just fat. Little tiny baby worms. Baby worms are intense. You're just like, how can something be that small? This is a little thin. So we're kind of just going to keep thinning it out. That is what we've decided. You know what I think is super neat? Colored hair. Recently, I've just seen a lot of, like, bright colored hair. Like, I saw, like, a lime green hair today. I've also seen a, it was like a hot pink. It just, it, it seems like where I am, everyone's doing these crazy stuff with their hair. And it looks so cool. I don't know if I'd ever uh, be brave enough to do it myself, but every time someone else does it, I'm like, wow. There was one person I saw had, it was like blue, amber ball, and like ombre. It looked sweet. It looked very cool. I, uh, makes me feel like I live in anime. Have you ever noticed that like in anime, everyone has like such crazy hair colors? It's amazing. I also wonder what it would be like in a cartoon. I always loved it when, uh, cause they always wear the same clothes, right? Except in like, I think Kim Possible, I think she wore different kinds, different outfits. She had a couple. Um, yeah, she had a couple, but I, it always made me laugh when you look at cartoons and they always have the same clothes and I wondered like, what would their closet look like? You know, it would just be a closet of, I must be on a slope here. My things are rolling away. A closet of like just all um, the same thing. But how easy is that? I kind of like that. I have a like a uniform shirt for my work. And albeit sometimes it's unfortunate when you forget to wash them. Uh, it's nice not having to think about what to wear in the morning. I also have to be careful. I find sometimes, I'll do that after, when I'm working on something, I'll be like putting so much stuff on their face that I kind of squish their head a little bit. And then the back, their head is flat. And uh, then they're stuck. I, I'm just going to take a quick break here. Actually, we'll finish his ears and then I'm going to take a quick break and run to the washroom. Okay, I don't want to go too thin, because I've been doing that. Perfect, I think that looks good. So, oh, and this part I'm actually going to stick onto the top of his head, like that, 
and then we'll smooth it out after because I want the ear to look like it's attached. Love this music. Thanks, composer, whom I'm not sure who the name is, but you did awesome. I watched a really cool, there's a Netflix special on the toys that made us, and it looks like this documentary of, like, toys we grew up with, and there's one in Star Wars, and the history of Star Wars is pretty neat. I guess the uh, first toys that came out for Star Wars, um, yeah, that's a good thickness were, like, because they couldn't find someone to, uh, to contract them, so they did it for super cheap, and then Star Wars became super successful, so the company made, like, a ton of money, and they had to go through all this legal battle mumbo-jumbo. So I wanted to be, like, right in there, in the ear in the corner, and, uh, I knew if I put my finger in there, I would probably ruin his eye. So that's why I'd rather use the tool. You don't even need to use tools. I mean, when I first started goofing around... I'm just going to have his ear kind of go out over top there um, instead of just being just kind of that little overlap there because I think it's adorable. It looks pretty cute. Got an inspiration photo hanging out next to me. There's so many different ways you can do like your interpretation of Yoda though. Hey, um, I recently just started doing uh, felting, which is pretty cool. I'll keep it a surprise because my supplies is on the other side. Um, you take wool, raw wool, and basically um, poke it with a barbed needle over and over and over again until it's a shape that you want. <laughs> right? I thought it sounded very therapeutic. Poking something with a bunch of needles. Right? Anyway, I'm pretty excited to stream doing some of that. This is not a craft form I've seen a whole lot of people use. I hadn't heard of it until I went to an art drop-in and there was someone there doing it who was like, oh yeah, here, try it. And I was like, this is the most magical thing ever. It feels like something you could do while like sitting and watching Netflix. Just like, it's for all the people out there like me who can't knit or crochet but want to do something you can just like do, 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 do. While uh, watching uh, Netflix or TV or a movie or listen to the radio or a book or music or whatever you're into. Um, cool. Okay, that looks attached-ish. Ish is a keyword. I'm going to use my flat brush again and blend this up, actually, because um, I'm trying to avoid head wrinkles. But again, like... Those little details are so easy to uh, to add in again later that it should be fine. I'm going to turn them around. And now I'm going to... There we go. Smooth in the back here. I love this. I always want to listen to, like, Star Wars music in the background. I think it sounds awesome. Uh, just making sure I don't <laughs> be aware of the front of his face. Just so we don't uh, squish all the hard work we did on the front. Okay, so his other ear. We are going to do that one now too. And I think this looks actually like a good length. I'm going to roll a little extra out because it is better safe than sorry. There's my knife. As she secretly stabs herself on stream. Oh no! Oh no! Actually, speaking of little green blobs, Mooncake, guys, is adorable from Final Space, and I like him a lot. That is one of the blobs that I am planning on uh, felting. It's pretty neat, though. You can actually, like, take felt, um... Not just make figures with it, but you can, like, felt, like, a uh, snowflake into, like, a wool mitt. As long as it's all wool, I think that's the thing. That's the, the kicker. It's got to be wool. But it's crazy. I remember being a kid and my grandma, like, came to stay at her house. And they were redoing this old wool blanket 
Um, she grew up on a farm, like, homestead farm, like, old-fashioned, and, uh, I just want this tip to match the other side of the ear, so it's a little too long, so I'm just going to chop a piece off there. There we go. And they, the, the thing that's important about working with a knife, even something I've learned from working in a kitchen, is you can't be scared of it. Um, I know some people are like, oh, it's sharp, you gotta, like, look at, but it is, yes, but you gotta be, you don't be scared of it. I, I find if you treat it kind of like a pencil, um, just don't poke yourself with a pencil. I don't know why I always end up working with, like, pointy objects. Like, the quills I work with, like, I've definitely bled from that before. It's fun working with tools. Okay! Anyway, so they took this old blanket, and they had this wool comb, and they were redoing it, because I guess it was old and needed some sort of refurbishing. I don't know. And it was all across everything. They had to re... They washed it and rebrushed the wool inside this blanket, and, like, tore it apart, and, like, I don't know, they fluffed it somehow. And then had to roll it through this big thing. I know. My really uh, technical terms. The thing and the other thing. The thing and the thing and the thing. Okay, I'm just making it match again. I like the shape of the other ear a lot. How it kind of curves over top. So I'm just going to copy that side. Uh, make that fit. Cool. And now we're going to... It's sticking out a little bit. He's got a hole in his ear. I'm going to pull it back. Anyway, they redid this giant wool blanket. And uh, wool is pretty sweet to work with. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to squish it this way. And this way. And pull it out again. With our flat brush. It doesn't look like we're going to have to redo any wrinkles very much. Which is exciting. Not that that's a huge deal. It's kind of squished right here, too. Oh, those are the little ears we glued them on, too. Perfect. You can use glue, actually. Um, if you want to. I like attaching it to the clay itself. Um, you could reinforce with glue as well. Um, if you don't bake it in time, sometimes if your house gets warm, things will melt. I made an Evie the other night, and I didn't bake it, and uh, Evie's ear fell off. She's sitting behind me. It just uh, fell off. We're just fine, because it's still soft. So, another thing I like to do is I take earring making tools. <laughs> uh, the little things that you put the beads on. The, the It's like a little metal rod quite thin and bendable and um, I cut them into pieces and use them as little stabbers um, I think you could use toothpicks I never have I've just used the metal myself okay so it looks like we have a Yoda head um, I would like to add some detailing onto his face as well actually before we take a break so let's add little He's pretty hairy, looking at that photo there. Um, I don't think I'm going to give him hair, but we'll give him ear hair. Because, you know, when you get old, you uh, lose all the hair where it matters and uh, gain it where you don't need it. Is ear hair needed? I know nostril hair has purpose. Like, like it's helpful in smell or something or like I don't know keeps your boogers from being awful or something um, I'm also doing the same thing where I rolled it out and I'm cutting it onto the clay itself um, there now he's got a little bit of like ear hair going on uh, I don't know I just find that that's what works best for me uh, than trying to like chop things up so I know nostril hair has, like, purpose. But what does ear hair do? I guess I could keep, like, bugs and stuff from in there. 
Not that, like, do you really have issues with bugs going in your ears? I guess it depends on your jaw. Maybe if you're, like, a mountain biking or something. Actually, I remember being a kid and biking down this pathway. And, uh, I was smiling because it was fun because I was going downhill. Because that's always way more fun biking downhill than uphill. Um, and I had all these bugs in my teeth. Like little tiny noceums. It was gross. I also remember getting a leech on my foot. I was playing in a pond. I never wore shoes. I don't know why. I mean, I probably would have, like, if I was a child nowadays, I'd probably get some sort of disease from doing this, but, um, during the spring, when all of the snow melts, or there's a park where I knew close by where I live, that floods. And so, it just gets thick. Ooh. More epic Star Wars music. Um, like, puddles and puddles of water, like, two feet deep. And so my friend and I thought it was super cool to walk to the park barefoot, city streets, drains, whatever, uh, and then walk around in the park when we can't see what we're walking on in this cool flooded, because it was like you're walking in a pond. And we loved it, and it was so fun, and we just played around in the water in the puddles, and now I'm like did that now. I mean, maybe even then, like, I probably would have gotten, like, I don't know. I had my tetanus shot. That's what's important. Didn't step on any, like, rusty nails. All right, so his head is done. We gave him some ear hair. I'm gonna give him a little forehead wrinkle. Uh, and another forehead wrinkle. And he's got some wrinkles going this way, too. So let's throw some in there. Sweet. I don't even know where this Stay Hydrated bot coming up on the screen there came from. But uh, thanks, dude. I'm glad that the internet cares. I have a couple pinks in here. This pink is really bright pink. Um, the green is really bright. So I don't want to do, like lime green and then this like lime pink because I don't want it to be neon I want like, the green can be bright but the uh, the pink I think should be softer so that's a little like hey so I'm gonna see if I have anything pre-mixed here um, in my big old bucket of clay and if not we'll just mix some mixing uh, clay is not a big deal the only problem, in this case it's not, the only part time I've come across problems when it's come to mixing clay is when, oh that's even brighter, that's intense. Okay, we'll make some. Is when you don't make enough when you mix clay and um, <laughs> you need to add something and you're like, oh rats, I don't actually have enough of what I need. Oh, it's right there. Ha, that's funny. I'm not going to make a whole lot because I don't need a whole lot. Um, so in this case, I want a light pink. So I want it mostly white and just a little bit of the pink. Um, whereas if I wanted to make it darker, I would add a little bit of dark to the light. So yeah, you're always adding little bits of dark to uh, a lot of your light. So this one's a little chalky because it's older also it's not warmed up so I'm just gonna squish around in my fingers again I'm not using a whole lot I just want to give them little pink cheeks little pink rosy cheeks it's a little tiny dab there this one looks pretty one-to-one -one actually so we'll see how that looks and you just need to fold it in on itself like you're playing with a booger you're gonna flick I don't know <laughs> mixing large amounts of clay uh, can actually get pretty difficult with your hands. If you want to go for it, go for it, but uh, it might just be good to get the clay color. Yeah, that's a little better, so that's actually a bit lighter now. More of a pastel, which is what I'm going for. So, I guess we'll give him some cheek wrinkles too. He's got some wrinkly cheeks going on there. 
Um, we'll just add some texture there. Maybe these are his smile lines. Who knows? You know, I feel like the wrinkles, like smile lines, are kind of awesome because it's like you've smiled so many times that your skin is just remembering it. I think that's a good accomplishment. That uh, I'm just gonna practice squish it on my finger just to see the size. Yeah, that should be fine. You smiled so much in your life that uh, you've earned those wrinkles. And then you kind of like always in a way look a little happy, which might not be like a great thing. But I feel like if I'm going to be an old person, I may as well look like a happy old person. Unless I'm not a happy old person, then it's just deceptive and that's no good. Okay, I think this is the size I want on this side too. And squish, 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 squish. There. Yeah, I've just never had as much success um, with making round eyes and textures and stuff than just squishing it onto whatever you're doing. So that's always good. Um, okay, so here we have Yoda's head. So far, we've got his eyes, his nose, his cute little mouth, and some rosy cheeks in his ears. Um, so Yoda's going to chill out. I'm going to run to the washer. And we're going to be right back and uh, make him a body. So awesome. So we will be back in just a couple minutes here.
Hello, remember to turn my mic back on or else I'll be talking off into the nowhere. Thank you for waiting. Great to see you. Hey, Mr. Dave Beard, thanks for jumping in. All right. So we're going to make a body now. Um, what I'm going to do actually for the big inside, I might just use some colors I want to get rid of um, to use up because I don't use up all of my color. Although I have a yellow here, maybe I should use up. But then again, I also kind of want to do C3PO. All colors are good in the end, I guess. I won't just, this one's kind of a yucky, weird color. We'll use that as our base for our body. Um, you could use other stuff too. I once did a coral reef out of clay, um, and I didn't need the whole thing to be clay, because that seems a little, like, wasteful, and if you're trying to be a little thrifty um, and keep it less expensive, you could do, um, I used um, a milk handle, actually. The only thing you want to watch with that is, uh, for the milk handle, I had to bake it, so plastic in a hot oven could melt on you. But, uh, yeah, so I've used that before. Um, I haven't dried cardboard. I was like, an inside, you could probably maybe star foam. Again, it's just anything that wouldn't melt. Um, you could try metal. I don't know how well your clay would stick to it. Because, you know, plastic will last for a chiliad in the landfill. Haha, <laughs> there's our word of the day for you. I feel a little Sesame Street brought to you by. Okay, so Yoda's, I'm making him kind of short and stout. So I'm just making like an oval feely here. He's going to be little. He's a cute little, like a chibi. Uh, this is a lot, actually. I'm going to take some off these. Ha, <laughs> he just lost weight. Look at that. He's getting old and frail. <laughs> All right, just like rolling and squishing down. That looks better. Still want to keep them small enough to be cute, right? It's like chibi Yoda, chibi clay Yoda. The head is the hard part. Not the hard part, just the labor and pencil part because there's so many little tiny little detail stuff you want to take care of. This part is like uh, a little less. So Yoda has like a brown shirt. Um, And I want to be conservative with my clay so I'm not gonna do like a brown shirt around the whole the whole base here and then do like his cloak um, I'm just gonna do brown on the front because that's all I can see so why 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 would I do more um, this clay is hard Ugh. So the older your clay will get, eventually it will dry out. Um, I have most of my stuff, as you've kind of seen in like saran wrap, in the original plastic even, um, in plastic bags. Wax paper works amazing. I have this tub of like super old clay that was actually given to me um, that has like, it's so old, but the clay is fine. And it actually is softer since than some of the stuff that I've had in like a sealed tub. So wax paper. If you're looking for something to, to do it in, it's wax paper. Um, so it's kind of warmed up enough. I'm not doing too much with it, so I'm not going to like, not nothing so super detailed. I'm just giving him a shirt. Um, actually, I'm going to do the toes first because I want my clothes to go over his feet. So I'm going to save myself a bunch of work if I do his feet first. Um, you could do the individual toes. I'm giving him like little froggy feet. Almost. So again, we'll do maybe this lump here. And we'll squish it out and kind of make it almost triangular. Uh, because I want it to be attached and I'm going to bring it out actually too. Maybe more hoof like. We'll start at making it look like a hoof. Um, a really big flat hoof. 
like that. Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, because then we can just cut the toes out of the hoof part, if that makes sense. If not, stay tuned, and I will just show you. I see pictures of it in my head. <laughs> the sad thing is, is when you can't get the picture in your head to look like, uh, or the picture on the paper to look like the picture in your head. So those look about the same size. We will bring this up. Okay, so on this base, remember this color doesn't matter because it's not gonna be seen. I'm gonna squish his little feetsies on here. Um, kind of out to the side. I want them to be out on the edges here. I'm kind of following an inspiration picture, but mine looks nothing like it, so that's great. I'm a kind of a seer arter. I like to see Yoda. That's why I usually keep a reference on the corner of the screen. Um, it's just a quick little look. Where's my third one? Oh, it's right in front of me. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. Um, but also I think it's it's helpful. So <laughs> there's sometimes when you look at the, the process, another piece I'm working on right now that we painted yesterday um, is a fan art for Link. So here we have Link as a fairy and Ganondorf as a toad. And so he's just watercolor right now. Um, so that's just the one layer of it. So it still looks a little like patchy. And eventually I'm gonna add the ink layer which adds all of these like details in. So it just adds this whole other dimension. So sometimes it's nice to have the reference photo on the screen. Um, I'm also just flattening out his toe there and then I'm going to chop up the toes. Again, um, that's where the shirt's going to be so I don't want it to be, I, I don't really care what this looks like. As long as it is flat so it's not like, hi I'm a big lump, I'm a, I'm a lump under the, the jacket that doesn't have, that makes sense. Um, anyway, it's nice to see the reference picture. Yeah, <laughs> so usually I find my train of thought. I really like how it's depicted in um, Inside Out, the movie, the train of thought, because it just kind of falls off, and I'm like, that's me. That is my train of thought. Okay, um, so we're going to cut out some toes. So I'm actually cutting out triangles like that focusing oh see my camera just wants to focus on the face because it's cuter so triangles with the point pointed towards the foot because that's just how it looks good very helpful Sarah um, okay, and I'm gonna, he looks a little dinosaur toe-ish, and he's not dinosaur. We're not going for Barney, so. I'm loving this music, honestly. I think I'm just gonna have this in all of the background streams. The thing about listening to, like, jams is then I want to start singing and dancing, so then I just, like, party out. And then I don't get a whole lot done, which is the only problem. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab my flat end here again, and uh, I'm actually gonna squish down the toes a bit. He doesn't have pointy toes. I'm gonna say he did cut his nails today, so I'm just rounding out the edges, and even separating the toes a bit, and bringing that foot together. Um, so nice round, I want nice little round toes, because round, um, short stout is just gonna give us that cute factor the cute factor uh, with clay so I that's just kind of the look I'm going for I'm sure there's all sorts of cute things that are not short and round and stout my tortoise sure is all of those things though today he was behind the door so I went to go feed him I opened the door. Thankfully, I did it slowly because he's done this before. And I just pushed him. The nice thing is, though, he has a shell. So he just, like, 
And he kind of like, just Mario. He didn't spin this time. There was a time he did spin. Um, I want to smooth this out, so I'm going to use this small, little round uh, end. There you go. This is like super basic um, clay supplies too. Um, I was kind of mentioning it earlier. I think I lost this train. But you don't actually need all of these tools um, when you're starting out if you're wanting to get into clay. The reason actually how I got into clay, it's funny how it's never like on purpose, like sitting down. Well, the felting is. The felting, I, I know, it was It's like someone showed it to me and I was like, that's cool. Um, and then I wanted to get into it. And there's a store in town and I have some connections there and she was wonderful and gave me all of my starting out supplies for free. Um, so she's technically my sponsor. So that's awesome. Um, lots of shout outs to the sew it yourself shop. All your crafting notary needs. Okay, so now we have his toes and his feet um, hanging out there. Now we're gonna make a shirt. Um, but Clay, I was making a Christmas present for a friend and I loved Pokemon. And I, I wanted to do was, I took this, I found a wooden box, like one of those cheap like dollar store unpainted wooden boxes and uh, got some wood multitasking. Okay, so I'm going to give him a flat end because this is going to be a shirt. And I don't need it to be bigger. I'm going to make it a little longer than his toes because I want it to hang out over his toes because it's going to make him look even shorter um, with his long garment. And I think that's kind of how his clothes look anyway. So I don't need this top part. And I don't need these side parts. I just need it to cover. And then you kind of get to save your clay, which is cool. Uh, I'll be a little economical with it. And why be wasteful if we don't need to be? Um, ha! Actually, I totally cut that too thin. So what I'm gonna, just going to do, this is a little thick. I'm going to lengthen it by uh, flattening it out. Um, so I was, I wanted to make him a, all of the Pokemon badges. So I took this wooden box and... There we go, that's thin. So now that since it's thinner, it's going to fold out over the toes nicer, which we can actually just do right now. Wow, uh, that does not need to wait. Because this is our layer. So I'm just going to lay that out over his toes. Not so much because we made the toes, so you might as well see it. Um, and I'm going to grab this and just kind of fold it onto the feet. And we can chop off the rest of that actually. I'm gonna push it over top of the body a little bit just because um, with the head, ooh. Um, yeah, we'll give him a bit of a collar. With the head, I would rather see the brown than my, my blue center, so. We'll just fold that over top right there because uh, the head's not going to totally fit on top of the, the body. Cool. So now we've got this going on, his little tunic shirt thing. Um, and I'm going to grab this medium ball and just kind of push it in by his feet because I really want it to look like it's hanging over his feet. Um, and not just sitting there. So um, anyway, so I wanted to make all the Pokemon badges um, for like f the beginning gens. Um, I think it was for Ruby. It's my guess. Um, it was a while ago. So then I ended up picking up a bunch of clay uh, and put some foam and fabric in on this little box that I... Um, Stained is the word I'm looking for. Cool, okay, and now I'm just going to take this, actually the smaller little ball-headed tool, and I'm just gonna fold it between his toes because I think that's cute. 
if it's like falling between the toes. I don't want to push it too much. I want it to look pretty natural. Um, this one I'm just going to push with this side of the tool actually. Just like the cloth has naturally fallen there. Which I pushed too hard here, so I'm just actually just going to smooth it out. Cool, so now he's got his little shirt tunic. Um, and now we're going to give him a coat. So I'm making sure my fingers aren't covered in brown. And we're going to make sure our tunes are still working because I was really enjoying that. Oh, excellent. Good. Now we're listening to Anakin's music. Perfect. Um, so we're going to use the white. I could add some yellow, but I want it to be sandy color and I feel like if I add the yellow I might go like baby room bumblebee yellow and I would I would rather it just be white if I needed to so I'm gonna make a strip kind of like the tunic um so you could start with like I'm gonna move his head so I don't actually like stab it so you could roll it like this and then just roll and flatten it out. So this is just going to save me some work because I don't want to have to be rolling and rolling and rolling. That is a cinnamon button trick actually because that's going to push it long wise. I want to push it lengthwise. So I did it too thin. I might actually need more clay but I'm feeling stingy. Okay, we'll add more clay. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. I've been convinced. Which means I have to re -hold, roll the whole thing or else it's going to look chunky. Alright, so rolling that out. Do, 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 rolling, rolling, rolling down the river. Are we long enough? Not quite. So we might need a little more. This is the last thing I think I need white for is this coat, so... We can use it all up if we need to. Okay, I think this is going to be good enough for now. Uh, it wraps around the front. I wanted to... A little more. I wanted to just come around the front uh, by his toes. Just so it's just cloaking, and then we're gonna add his sleeves on separately. See this part, there's a lot less detail going into it. It's a lot more simple. Um, so it's not gonna be as complex or time consuming, and it's not as small as well. I find smaller details, as they usually do, um, just take a little more attention. And it is cloth and it's also going on to a very thick part of clay so we do not need it to be thick because it doesn't need to stand on its own at all which is awesome it just needs to be color that's all it is is just the color so this is quite thin actually it's kind of getting to a point where you can almost see through it um, I don't think I'm gonna cut before aha that's just where I want it I do want to cut before actually um, this part's a little long and funny looking, so we're just going to get rid of that. And I don't want to cut too much off because I don't want to re-roll it. So, coming around the outside, um, you can pull on it too, which is what I just did. Uh, just wanting it to look even here on his cloak. I'm going to pull a little more. Awesome, and we want it. I want it to be even-ish in the center. No, well, more than ish. I want it to be nice and uh, mostly symmetrical. Not a perfectionist, but I do like it looking nice. So quality is important. Okay, so that's about good, I think, right there. Except that doesn't match for much. Uh, we're gonna again leave a little room for collar. But I am gonna slice. Don't cut towards yourself as all of the common sense says. Get rid of that glob there. <laughs> Globs. I love that word, globules. It's just like so 
odd. I hear it and I go, what an odd word. Which is why I partially chose it as part of the currency, because I just thought it sounded cool. Okay, so we're going to give him a bit of a collar. Um, don't need it to be super thick. Just enough that, uh, again, we don't want that, that base color showing through. Ooh, and we don't want to rip that. That's no good. Uh, you could add wrinkles. If you wanted to add wrinkles into your cloth, um, you would make folds out of it just like you would like your shirt so you would have to make a longer piece of clay and fold it in between I'm just gonna fill in that green spot there on his shirt that I ripped a hole in sorry Yoda oh it's so stubborn too um we'll just pull from over here done never happened like an eraser okay and this line I want to clean up so I want this has a bit of a bulge to it I don't want that. I want it to be straight. Kind of like that, but still look mostly natural. Also kind of falling out over the toes. This side is my favorite because I think it looks great. So we're just going to flatten that out um, and this side up here as well. Perfect. Almost. <laughs> just about. Perfect is all in my head. Perfect for how I want it. Not literally perfect. Okay, so now he's got a cloak. Um, let's just <laughs> match it up to his head for a second to make sure we're still chucking along. Okay, we're just about out of Yoda. He's looking a little fat. A little too, I wanted his head bigger. So what I'm gonna do actually um, I don't want to cut into it because I don't want to take the center out too much because um, that's going to wreck it. I'm going to make him a little taller and less stout. Um, so just pointing more of a point and less of a, yeah, it looked, just looked a little too blobby, like he got a little squished. And I don't like how this isn't lining up, so I'm just going to take that flat edge, which is really good for touch-ups like that. His cloak is coming a little more to a point now, but I like how the body looks much better. What we could do... No. I could pull his toes off. No, no, I won't pull his toes off. That sounds so violent, hey? I'm going to pull off your toes! Um, now we're going to make sleeves. Um, which are just going to look like, almost like triangles. So, similar thing. This one, kind of like the ears. I'm going to roll it out and then cut the shape I want. Because uh, it's mostly going to be flat. And then I can copy what I cut. Um, use it as a stencil for the other side. Uh, maybe just flatten that out a little more. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna just gonna freehand it. Um, so it's gonna be straight on the top. I want it to be nice and he's got like um, swooshy, <laughs> swoopy sleeves. They're nice and wide, and bring it back up here. So kind of like a triangle, but I want the edges rounded. Actually, I'm just gonna copy that to the other side. Uh, and then flat again. These ones you want to be decently thick, um, just because it is an accent point, not just a, a cloak or a, a piece of fabric for color. Cool, and then I'm going to peel this off. My white is feeling a little warm and it's getting a little sticky, so just being careful not to, uh, to squish it or overwork it. Cool, okay, um, and just flattening out this side. Um, so it is his sleeve. I feel like if I put, because I want to make a little Yoda hand. Actually, I'm going to make these thicker. I think that's going to be the answer. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So I was thinking of putting the hand, attaching it to the body, and then putting the shirt over top. But I think that's going to look a little funny. Like, why is his sleeve with covering his shirt? <clears throat> that's coming out of his cloak, wouldn't it be coming out of his sleeve? So this is just a fun way of not having to make arms. So I'm just going to make it nice and thick. Um, and we're going to do this again. 
uh, we'll just do it like this. And again, going up. Well, you can see that. Perfect. Flat and around. And then I'm going to mimic it this way. And go up and around. Perfect. And we'll just pull these out. There we go. It's like those uh, game puzzle pieces, right? That just pop out of the molds. I always wonder, what do you do with that like extra plasticky piece? Like, it just like, I don't know. Make sure you don't swallow them. Okay, um, these got a little manhandled, so I'm going to flatten them out and kind of give them a bit of a rounder shape and less um, manhandled. <laughs> uh, making sure the thing I really want to look good on this one is the sleeve, the, the big swoopy sleeve. Um, we're going to use the round tip there to actually make a spot for us to attach the hand into the sleeve. So I want to make sure it's thick enough in here that I'm going to be able to get a hand in there. Um, get a handle on things. And this one's a little big, actually. So I'm going to cut back on the sleeve here. And I just pulled my blade out, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Which is fine. Blades in X-Acto knives are replaceable. If you did not know. This one is a loosener one. I don't know if there's other ways to do it. Mine loosens. I'm pretty sure most of them replace that way. Uh, I did not know that. But it makes sense because why would you like have a dull little scalpel thing? It looks kind of scalpel-y. Not that I would ever... I like dissecting actually. In school it was pretty cool. I dissected... We did a rat, a worm, like an earthworm. We also did like a parasite thing, which was funny because the teacher was like, make sure you wash your hands before you uh, touch your face. Because these are parasites that will grow in your liver. And... Uh, they have been in formaldehyde. However, make sure I'm making this the right size. The eggs, because we're dissecting a female and a male, the eggs can withstand formaldehyde. So if they get in your system, you could actually develop this parasite. And it's like, oh, maybe that's why I'm always hungry. Maybe I picked up a, a parasite in high school. Yeah, like wouldn't be, I'm sure it wouldn't be the first time. Okay, um, this one's going this way. I should remember to make sure I'm doing it the right way. So, it's just about my bedtime. Um, so I want his arms just to be right on the edge of the sleeve. And again, same pulling motion, all kind of the same techniques. Um to create your character. Um, but I want it to, st I don't want it to be like too attached um, because it is his sleeve, right? Uh, we do want it to be sticking out a little bit. So again, sticking out this side. Um, I just want it on the outside of the cloak or on the inside of the cloak and pulling as well into the back until it disappears and then just flattening the rest of it until it uh, makes sense. And I'm going to pull it down as well so it doesn't look so pulled back entirely. Get rid of my fingerprints and I'm going to round out the side too uh, just to make it look less boxy. Just little tiny pats. This one's really thick. Um, just when you're looking down on it, the one side looks really thick. So I'm actually just going to shave off a bit there. So I'm not loving it. And then you can just flatten it out again. 
And then it's kind of the right, uh, the desired thickness that I would like. So next I'm gonna grab my smallest little ball headed tool. Bang. And I'm actually just gonna go back and forth on the inside of his sleeve. So making it look hollowed out almost in his sleeve because this is where it's hard and this one I'm going to make a little deep on the far side because that's where I'm going to be attaching his hand because so we're going to give him a little staff to hold on to because Yoda's got a staff so not an infection just a staff perfect maybe he has a parasite too he's on that odd island for a while it looks kind of hobbit like hey there we go. So we got our two little like hollows. <laughs> our two hollows. We're talking about hobbits. <clears throat> Sorry. So. Do I make his hands first or his staff first? Hands. I'm going to make his hands first. Hands are just going to be cute little blobs as well. <laughs> Yay blobs. Uh, these ones are a little big, so just pulling away. Oh, I think that one looks cute. Look at that. It's like, Sarah, that's just a round lump. Yes, it is. It looks like a little bean or a little bean Yoda hand. Um, it does look quite thick, though, actually, so let's take some away. We don't want to do that. Uh, okay. <laughs> hmm. It's always more fun streaming at one in the morning. Okay, there we go. So we got that guy, and we're gonna give him another cute little hand. Um, one's gonna be on top, one's gonna be on the bottom. We'll fold them together once we got them on the in the body. Um, again, kind of make pulling out the the one side of it to to stick in. Um, I also have some glue specifically for this clay that I might attach as well, just because I'm not going to be able to really pull this one into the uh, clay as well as the other ones were, just because of where it's at. So I got some glue. I'm just going to throw a little tiny glob on each side. This glue will also dry clear and it bakes as well. So you can either just glue it and it'll stay or you can uh, bake it as well. So I'm going to stick his hands into his sleeves. So that one is the top hand and it's going to go up here. And this hand is the bottom hand. goes right there so they're kind of folded over themselves in the sleeve and what we're gonna do is give him a staff that his hands are gonna be leaning on top of so I don't want it to be the same brown because that's lame um, instead of adding black I find black adding black to colors can make things kind of gray so I have this yellowy color Again, I'm not using a whole lot, so just a little bit. And then I'm going to grab some of the same-ish, ish. Well, yeah, no, it is the same. The same brown we used for his cloak uh, with the light brown. And I'm just going to mix them together and lighten it up a little bit. So there's definitely ways to get around it. You don't have to own a million colors of clay um, to get your different shades and dimensions. You can blend things for sure. This music's getting kind of ominous. All right, blending that together. This does look a little light still, and I do want it dark. So we'll add more brown. <laughs> it always makes me think of whenever I hear brown. Mr. Dave Beard has... Um, he took the song that if I was blue, da da dee da dum da da do 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 do. He's taking that 
and uh, he replaced all of the blues with brown. So it's just like, if I was brown, da da dee da da da. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay, so that's getting to be a nicer, darker color. Um, you can kind of see it's a little marbled still. If you wanted a marbled texture in anything, this is kind of how you would. You, there, there's certain folding. I'm sure there's certain folding ways that you could get it to look uh, marbled, which is good. Okay, that's the color that I like. I'm I'm game for that color. It's different, but still brown. Um, and we're gonna make a stick. We can add some textures to it. Actually, I think I probably will. Just for some differences. I could have made a shirt brighter and his stick darker, but I don't want to. It's going to be thick. Because Yoda's an old man who's going to lean on it. It doesn't have to be all that tall. So we're going to... Oh, I got white on my knife. There we go. Right there looks good. Uh, sweet. And I'm going to hit this end as well, just so it's flat on both sides. And while it's sitting in front of me, I'm actually just going to run over it a couple times with the knife. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, and twist it around a bit, just because I want to give it a wood texture. Just to add some dimension to it. And maybe a couple pokes for... Uh, like a knot here or there. Okay, so now we've got our little textured glob. Don't mind my cut on my, my hand. And we're going to stick it right under his hand. And maybe I'll glue that down, actually. I think that'll be good, because I don't want to... I like the thickness, so I don't want to change that. So I'm going to stick a little bit of glue right down the center there. And we'll stick it right under Yoda's hand and just as a little security measure. It's a little um, longer. You should not cut towards yourself. But I did. Caught on camera. <laughs> there you go. So that's good there. Um, and now we just have to attach Yoda's head. And we're ready to go. So I mentioned them earlier. I'm going to grab some right now. Um, some jewelry making supplies that I mostly just use for stabbing things. Uh, so these guys, they are uh, a flat bottomed earring uh, piece. They're super cheap. You get a bunch of them in a container. So what you would do is take beads <clears throat> and like put them on and then that piece would keep them on. And then you'd fold it on to like an earring thing. But we're not using them for earrings. We are using them for heads. Uh, I could not find my small snipers, so we're using these guys. The best that I've been told, and I learned this in food cake decorating, is three prongs. So I'm just going to cut this one. I guess I don't need this one. I'm going to cut this one into three. Not send them flying all over and uh, getting them in your eye. Perfect. So this one's in three now. And I'm also going to cut off that uh, flat end I was showing you for earrings because that's not going to go into my clay very well. Okay. So. I'm going to put them into the body, I think. Nope. I'm going to put them in the head and then put them into the body. Uh, so we're going to stab it into three. Uno, two, oh, three, oh. And they're both thick on both sides, so I don't need to worry about stabbing through very much. Um, and I'm just going to line them up. And uh, it looks like it's working pretty well. Um, I'm just pre-poking some holes there, just so I don't end up stabbing and um, having them go one way, and instead of attaching and having some on one side. Okay, so what we're doing here uh, is just like that. They're attached. 
bring the two together and right before it's right on the body I like to add a little glue just for safe measures right in the center there not a whole lot because the prongs will hold it but you don't want anyone's head falling off and giving it a good little squish Perfect, and now that he's squished together, we've got a Yoda. Um, this is where you get to do your touch-ups. So I'm gonna add a couple more wrinkles to his forehead, because he's an old guy. Um, and just looking at a different angle, um, his ears look a little messy. So I'm going to use a tool to smooth that out a bit. Um, kind of bring it together. Being careful not to rip his ear off, which is definitely a possibility by doing this because it's pretty thinly attached. Uh, that looks a little better. The final touch round is kind of the fun part where you're like, eh, am I done? Am I not done? <clears throat> um, I'm actually going to grab the, the medium ball again. And I just want to give his ears a bit more shape. Kind of uh, round them towards his face a little more. Pressing them in because it's looking a little flat. Might give him a little more life to be a little rounder. Um, but I think aside from that, he might be all done. So let's take a look here. Here we are with our cute little Yoda. Look at him. Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. So he's got his cute little face. Oh, I'm pretty, I think he's pretty great. Sweet. So there you are. There is Yoda and all of his cuteness uh, made in sculpty clay. And all it took was just under two hours. So that was um, random surprise, late night streaming, crosshatch creations. Um, if you want to check out some Pokemon, <laughs> we did an EV the other night. You could check out the channel. I should be putting this up on YouTube pretty soon here as well. So thank you for joining. It was uh, awesome to see you. And uh, that's our finished product. So thanks so much. I hope to see you again soon. Ciao for now. May the badges ever be in your favor.